My name is John Romano. I'm one of the co-founders of Nickel Brook Brewing Company. Uh, we actually started the company in 1992. It was actually called Better Bitters, uh, and it was a homebrew store. So I quit my job. I was in the aerospace industry from the age of 15 to 28. At 28, I quit and started my passion of brewing. I've uh, made pickled, jarred, fermented with my parents uh, uh, and quit my job and started Better Bitters. It evolved and became one of the busiest homebrew stores in the province and one of the top uh, on-premise, brew on-premises in Canada. We decided to build a brewery. We built the brewery to make wort for ourselves. Wort is the base of beer, it's like soup stock. And in the midst of building the brewery, 24 for 24 service and beer wars were created, buck of beer. So all of a sudden, home brewing died. We didn't know what to do. We were a pretty dominant player and, and, and very engaged in the city of Burlington and Halton region. So we decided to start a craft brewery. The brewery is actually named after my kids, Nick and Brooke. And in 2004, we opened the doors of Nickel Brook Brewing Company, which we are celebrating our 20th year. Nickel Brook has uh, grown over the years. Um, We've always been pioneers and innovators in the industry. Um, the brewery actually is one of the first breweries to produce sour beers, barrel-aged beers, gluten-free beers, uh, fruit beers, and we've evolved to be the seventh largest craft brewery in the province. It's gone through a lot, a lot of challenging times. One, taxation, um, getting the consumer to you know convert from domestic beers to craft beer uh, has been a huge challenge. So we got in it kind of at the wrong time, pioneered, you know, the expansion of craft in the province and we're in it at the right time. And then all of a sudden COVID hit and COVID changed the world. The first year of, of COVID things were okay. We lost a lot of our bars and restaurants but we gained a lot of online and retail took off. It was like Christmas every, every day of the week. And then second year of COVID, I think all of a sudden everybody woke up and go, went, oh my God, I've gained so much weight. I don't feel good. I can't drink as much. The government was pushing, you know, two drinks a week. Well, my dad lived to be 91 and he had a couple of glasses of wine every day with his meal. So what does that tell you? And then inflation, that people are talking about inflation being seven, eight, nine percent. I wish barley went up 50%, cans went up 30% corrugated tripled in price. People didn't realize what they were doing to the corrugated business when they were buying everything online. All of a sudden, a box in a box and people like Amazon and Walmart, they just tied up all the cardboard in, in the country. And little player like me that might have a contract with their producer and provider didn't have penalties, so we weren't getting supply. And all of a sudden you had to go to people that had board and the price tripled. So it's been a very, very challenging few years. And now to put another spin on things, you know, taxation and, you know, Ford wants to put beer in convenience stores, which, you know, is great for the consumer, but it opens up a huge can of worms and a challenge and how a small player like me and any craft brewery gonna be able to service eight more thousand points of distribution. So it's a constantly changing and evolving industry. And, you know, we, we were a brewery and, and for years, you know, beer was growing and growing, craft was growing and growing. And then a couple of years ago, all of a sudden beer sales started to drop and flatten. And it's a known fact that the younger demographics, like a 13 year old entry level alcohol beverage drinker does not start with beer. I did when I was 19, the first thing I did was I bought a case of beer, a 19 year old that doesn't do that right now there there you know there's cannabis has come into play these coolers have come into play and if you look at our portfolio we now make a paloma cocktail we're working on a second and third so we had to wake up to you know realize that you know we're a brewery but in all honesty we're in the alcohol beverage game so if you think you're a brewery and you stick to your guns to only make beer you have to give yourself a, a head a shake because it, it's not the case you you're in the alcohol beverage game and you need to do whatever you need to do to pay your bills and keep your staff busy and, and, and be profitable. So it's an ever ending, revolving, changing industry that we're in. So um, we, we have a, a, a great tap room here in Burlington and we also have a tap room in Etobicoke. You know, we, we try to really work close with our staff and make them part of the family. We, I think we 
um, embrace and engage a, a family environment. We have staff that have been with me, you know, from 1992 when we started Better Bitters and, and from 2004 when we started Nickelbrook. We have students that started working for us when they were 14, 15 years old and now they're in their 30s. So I think when people come into our establishment, they feel at home, we have a great environment. Um, and we, we make good beer and we serve good food. Like we don't have a huge menu, but the food that we serve is, is, is good quality. So it's a combination of, you know, environment, staff, good beer and, and, and quality food. We try to keep the place clean and organized. Um, so we, we work hard at all levels. Bathrooms are kept clean, floors are kept clean, windows are kept clean. We, we have very high standards for our staff and, and high standards for our brewers. And, and we make good beer. Like I'll put our beer up against any other brewery in the, in the country. And, you know, we'll, we'll rate pretty high. Like I really think we work hard to, you know, service uh, at all levels. Expansion for our brand right now, believe it or not, is in non-alcoholic products and in cocktails. We didn't want to play in the seltzer game. That is a very competitive market and there's some huge players in that industry, but consumers are busy. So if you look at our Paloma, our Paloma is made with, you know, a guave spirit, grapefruit juice, blood orange, lime, and, and then soda. So for someone to create that same product, they would have to have five items to produce it. And we use fresh fruit. And then now an elk has gone crazy. A lot of people, especially my generation and demographics, they love their beer. They want to be able to enjoy a, a, a couple of beers. So they might start off, off having a beer or two and then they'll go to a now and off. So that way they can drive home and, and, and wake up fine the next morning. So now an alcoholic is growing at double digits. Seltzers and cocktails are growing at double digits. So we just launched our second now and elk and we're now developing our second cocktail. So you'll see us playing more and in the cocktail world and in the non-alcoholic beer world. In a tap room, is there a perfect poured beer? Of course there is. Um, so you, you, A, you want your beer to be cold. Um, this is very important. So we work hard to make sure that our coolers are kept clean and units are maintained and our lines are, are maintained. So that's important and that will provide you a, you know, a, a part of a perfect pour. But pouring is also a technique opening the, the valve properly, letting it flow properly, and then closing it properly. And that, if the person's doing it right, you will create a little bit of head. And when you pour a glass of beer, you probably want about a half inch of, of foam on, on the top of your glass. And we work hard to train our staff and maintain our equipment to be able to accomplish that. But then we also do barrel aging. If you look at the tap room, we have all kinds of barrel wood furniture on the walls those aren't barrels that we bought those are barrels that we got from distilleries all over the america and we put beer in them so nickelbrook is famous for uh, its barrel aging and we were one of the first breweries in ontario to start a barrel program so we have a beer called kentucky old kentucky and it's uh, an imperial stout that's been aged for a full year then we have cafe which is Kentucky that's been aged for a full year. And then we actually age on coffee beans for another three months. We did another beer last year called Salted Caramel, where we actually got Kentucky and we added salt and caramel to the beer. So we're always evolving. These are very high-end, high-alcohol beers. So it's, they're sippers. You, they're expensive, they are only made once a year. And it's something that you would almost treat like a, a good bottle of wine. You'd share it with some you know, friends and family and, and sip on it over a course of an evening. I just want to emphasize to everybody how important it is to support local businesses like Nickelbrook. We create jobs in our community. We support local charities and events and, and giving back to your local businesses is important. Going to restaurants that have Nickelbrook, if you don't see Nickelbrook in your local hangout, restaurant, bistro, pub that you go to frequently, ask for it. You as a consumer have as much power or more power than we do walking in. We're just another brewery looking for business. So it's important to support local and drink craft beer. And I just can't emphasize, we have a great space in Burlington. We make great beer. We have a great environment. It's clean, welcoming, warm. 
We have great staff and we make great beer and have good food. Cheers. Thank you.